Hello everybody, this has been your teacher Jenny here again with you spending time bringing math to the comfort of your home. Now our topic for today is factoring. Now this will be needed when we do divide polyny polynomials later on and this is most especially related to general mathematics under operations of functions, especially under division of functions. Okay, let's start with A. Now, the first one is the greatest common factor. So when we say greatest common factor, we are looking for a factor in which it is common among all the terms in there. So when we say factor, by the way, those are the numbers that once we multiply them, that would result to that certain number. So looking at looking at our first example we have 7x plus 49 and when we say factoring by gcf our greatest common factor we have to check each of the term of your expression or equation in there now looking at your terms in there by the way when we say terms they are uh, separated by a plus or a minus. So this time we have two terms. The 7x is the first term and the 49 is another term since it is separated by a plus. So looking at each of the term in there, we are simply looking or uh, checking whether they have the same factors on it. Now, looking at your 7x, we've got factors of 7 and x, and on 49, the factors of 49 are 7 and 7. So if I'm going to write it in a way that this should be in factors, so I will have it like 7 times x plus 7 times 7. Take note, uh, 7 times 7 is 49, so we have that as the factors of 49, 7 times 7. Now next, once you have factored everything in there, uh, you are going to look for the common factors within that 7x and 49. So checking, we have here 7 on 7x and 7 on 49. So since they are common, we are going to take them out. So taking them out, that would mean we have year seven, and then we enclose the numbers left inside of the parentheses or the factors left inside the parentheses. So once we took the seven out, that means to say we are literally dividing the seven x by seven. So when we have there is seven x divided by seven, because we're taking out the seven in there. So that means to say, this can be canceled out and what is left only is your x in there. But if you know really how to take out factors right away, you don't need for you to do this one, like dividing the seven x by seven, we're dividing each of the term by the common number, which is 7. But anyways, just for the sake of discussion, everybody, let me just show you this one step by step. Okay, now, so we have here a plus. We go to the second term, everybody, and since we've taken out that 7 from that 7 times 7, what is only left is your 7. Or when we say 49 divided by 7, when we go back to the original, 49 divided by 7, that is simply 7. So what is left in there is 7. So this is now the result when you factored out the greatest common factor of the expression 7x plus 49. So I hope that is clear with you. Now next, we go to the next example. Kindly do that one on your own. You can pause the video if you want to, and then go back once you have the answer. Now, factoring your GCF in here, 
Upon checking, we have here on the first term, which is a squared plus, I mean, a squared, b squared, that's your first term, because that is separated by a plus, and the second term is a, what is only common in there is the a alone. So this is now what you are going to take on this. If you've got variables common in there, you are going to take out the variable that contains the smallest exponent or the lowest exponent. Now, on a squared, b squared, your exponent for the a there is squared. And on a alone, the exponent of your a is 1. Now, what you will be taking out is the a there only because that contains an exponent which is 1, which is smaller compared to your 2 as an exponent. So, taking out the a in there, that would simply mean that we are taking one of the a here. So what is left there only is one of your a and then the b squared. And then we have there, since we've taken that out there, this is similar to us dividing a over a. And that is equal to 1. Now this is now the result when you factor out the common or the GCF in there, or the greatest common factor. Next, we go to this example. Now, we have actually three terms in there. So, you can pause the video if you want to solve, or if you want to factor out the GCF, and then go back to the video once you have the answer in there. Now, checking up your terms. So, we've got this one as the first term, the x. Second term is x squared y. Third term is x cubed y squared. Checking those up, we notice that we have all of the three terms an x. So that would simply mean that we are taking out an x. But what do you think is the exponent in there? So checking up the exponent really, we cannot really just jump into conclusion that that should be x. We must verify that one, whether we are really correct on that uh, assumption that it should be 1. Now checking up on the first term, your exponent for the x in there is 1. The second term, your exponent is 2. Third term, the exponent is 3. So we are taking the lowest exponent in there and that is y. So we have here the first common factor which is x. Now since we have y in here we are going to check whether each of the terms in there contains your y. Now looking at it your x doesn't have a y in there. So if that is the case then you will not take the y as the common factor because if you are doing the common factor, it must be that that variable or number is common on all the terms. I hope it's clear. Now, moving on, so we've extracted only one variable which is common among the three terms, and that is x. Now, if we take that out, We've got another factor here, which is when we are taking out the, the x on the first term, we are literally doing x divided by x. So we have a 1 in there. Now next, we copy the operation. It's a plus. And then we go for the x squared y, in which we are taking an x away from that expression or that term. So that means if we do x squared y and divide it by x, we are actually doing a 2 minus 1 in here, which is equal to 1. That is how we are doing the division of variables. We subtract their exponents. So meaning this will result to x because 2 times, I mean 2 minus 1 is 1. And then we have here another y. Okay, so we are to pl plug it in. So we have x, y in there, and then we have the plus. Now, next term is x cubed y squared. 
Now, dividing that again to the number that, or to, to the variable that we've taken out, we have that one as x. This will be equal to 3 minus 1 as the exponent in there because we are just simply subtracting their exponent once we do the division of the common variable in there. So your x now contains an exponent equivalent to 2. And then we have your y squared copy. So we are to plug that in here. We've got x squared, y squared. Now, since we are really ordering here in math, so we will be writing that one in a way that your highest exponent shall, shall be on the first term down to the lowest exponent. So we will be writing this one into x times x squared y squared plus xy plus 1. And that's it. That is your result when you factor out the greatest common factor on that expression. Next, we go to this example here. So, checking up each term, you can actually pause the video if you wanted to answer and then go back to it again once you're done. Okay, now, checking up each term here, we have 10x cubed and cubed minus 2hn squared plus 14hn. Now, notice that we have numbers. It's not only with variables, but we have numbers beside those variables. They are what we call as the numerical coefficients. So, the numerical coefficients, we are going to check whether they have common factors on each of the term. Now we have 10 here, we have 2, and a 14. So how do we know the greatest common factor between those numbers? So we are going to uh, re go for the prime factorization. When you say prime factorization, it is in a form that we are expressing the factors of that certain number as all prime numbers. So, prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and so on. Those are the prime numbers. So, we will be expressing each of the factors in there in terms of a prime number. So, let's start with 10. So, for 10, this is now 5. Sorry on this. Okay, this is now 5 times 2. And then 5 times 2, 5 and 2 are prime numbers. We have h cubed and cube minus, since 2 is prime, so we have 2. Just simply copy that one. So we have 2h and squared plus 14 can be... Uh, can be written as factors of 7 and 2. 7 and 2 are prime numbers, so copying h and n in there. Now we are going to look for the common factors in there. We start with this one. So notice that we have 2. Here we also have 2. The other number here or term has also 2. So that means to say that 2 is common to all of the terms in there, so we are going to take that out. Now, for 5 and 7, since those numbers are not found on each of the terms in there, so we are not going to take that one as the common factor of all the terms. Next, checking up on your variables, we have two variables here, the h and the n. So let's try to look at h and know which one contains the lowest exponent. So we start with h here. It contains cube or 3 as an exponent in there. Here it contains 1. So that means to say we have an idea now that our h must have an exponent which is 1. But let's try, try to check on the third term whether we contain an h in there. Otherwise, if the third term doesn't contain an h, we are not going to make use of that. So I hope that's clear. So since we have an h here, so we will be taking out an h to the power of 1 because that is the lowest 
exponent in there for your h as a, as a common factor there. Next one, we have another variable, which is n. So we have n cubed here. We have n squared. And checking up the last term, it contains an n in there. So the lowest exponent is 1. So we are writing that here. Now, we are now set with all those common factors, the GCF of our terms in there. So we are now going to write the other factor in here. And we'll start off with your first term. Now, we've taken out your two in there on the first term. So that means to say we are going to cross that out because it has been taken out, the two in there. So what is left only is the five. And take note, we have h also on the common factor. This is three, everyone, and this is only one. So that means to say we'll just directly subtract the common variable, their exponent, so we have 3 minus 1, that will be 2. So we have right away h to the power of 2. Next, we go for the n. Now, n here is a cube. So since we are taking out n in there, so we have 3 minus 1, that will be 2. So this is now n squared. Now we're done with the first term. We go to the second term. So second term common is 2. So we are to cross it out. So this is again minus. And then another common thing is the h. So we are to cancel this out because you have the same exponent in there. And that would mean a 1 minus 1. That will be a 0. And h to the power of 0 is simply 1. So I hope that's clear. Next, we go to n. n has a power 2 here and the one in here on the common. So two minus one, that will be one. So we still have an n here left. Now going on to the last term, we have here two, which is common, and h, which is also common, and your n, which is also common. So writing that up, we have that one as seven only. So that's it, that is our factor using the greatest common factor. So I hope you've learned something from me today and I'll see you in my next video. Kindly share, like, and subscribe. I'll see you soon.